Hello and thank you so much for joining me for this thought from the Bible. This is actually going to be the last video for a little while. I'm travelling to the UK this time next week and I will be there for two months so I won't be recording any videos during that time. But if you'd like to see me live you can always come along. Um, I'll be speaking in a, a few different churches. Myself and my husband Dave will be talking about the work that we do here in Liberia with Mission Aviation Fellowship and I'll be preaching in a couple of places as well. So you can see our website for all of those details dbwaterman.com forward slash calendar and please do let me know if you've enjoyed these videos let me know if you would like me to continue when I get back to Liberia in June that really helps me a lot to know whether they're an encouragement whether you're enjoying them so I, I know if it's worth carrying on so just let me know now as it's the last video before I leave, I feel like I should be exploring you know, one final minor character, right, to continue with this series that we've been looking at. But instead, I'm going to the opposite end of the spectrum this time, and we are going to the most main character that you can find in the Bible, Jesus Christ himself. But just a little bit of background before we get there. See, the last week or two, I have been feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I think that's fair to say. You know, we leave for the UK in one week today and in that time I still need to finish up some final prep for presentations and sermons. I need to pack for that trip for two months in the UK, preparing weird and wonderful meals, using up what we have left in the freezer because who knows what the power will do while we're away. And um, and of course, there's that, that small extra thing of moving house. Within the next week, I need to move into a brand new house that has been built here, but it's not quite finished yet. There's no power in there. So I'm trying to think about moving while also living where I am at the moment. It's, it's just all a little bit chaotic. And I think it's fair to say that it's felt like a, a bit of a stressful season. And when you add on to that, my, my husband Dave's busyness at work, loads of overtime that he had to do earlier this year to try and keep our MAF planes flying, you're left with both of us kind of feeling like we've reached the end of our strength. And it can be really easy to feel a bit isolated when you reach that position. It's easy to start questioning where are you in this, God? But what's amazing is that in those moments when you feel overwhelmed by the weight of the world, you are not alone. God hasn't abandoned you. And more than that, he knows exactly what you're feeling. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, we read this. Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if, it's, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus himself, God on earth, felt completely and utterly overwhelmed. His situation was, was significantly worse than my own small troubles. And yet I find it incredible to realize that, that he completely understands. He knows how it feels. He knows what it's like when you wanna crawl back into bed after the alarm clock goes off and hide from the world. He knows what it's like when your heart feels so sorrowful, so broken, that even drawing the next breath feels like too much. He knows, he understands. 
He is our high priest who has ascended into heaven, yes, but yet who is able to empathize with everything that we are going through with every doubt and temptation and sorrow and suffering because he went through it all. And reading through the pages of the Bible, we, we encounter so many different characters who, who had that moment of feeling utterly overwhelmed. We meet the prophet Elijah when, when Jezebel was out to get him and he prayed that he might die. The prophet Jeremiah was thrown into a pit, into a cistern for speaking God's word to words to his people and he found himself sinking into literal mud with absolutely no way of getting himself out of that situation. We find Peter, one of Jesus's inner circle, one of his closest friends, and we find him weeping bitterly after denying his saviour three times, overwhelmed with sorrow with guilt, maybe. Over and over and over again, we read of situations where people are overwhelmed, where it seems there is no hope for redemption, no hope for salvation, no strength to carry on. And yet over and over and over again, we see that there is hope. We see that there is a way through. We see that there is a God who understands what we're feeling, a God who is walking with us and working for us, even if we can't see it at the time. You know, there will come a point in your life where you feel overwhelmed. It will happen. You might be overwhelmed with grief, or with sorrow, with frustration, with anger, with guilt, with, with any number of different feelings. And when you reach that point in your life, remember Jesus. When you're overwhelmed, pray. It's the first thing that Jesus did. He found a, a quiet spot. He fell with his face to the ground and he prayed to his father. And you'll notice also that he prayed with complete honesty. He shared the situation, he shared what he was feeling. He didn't hide it from Father God. We can come and we can pray and we can say, this is really hard right now, God, and I don't know what to do. And I feel completely overwhelmed, but I know that you are here with me. In those moments where everything feels a bit too heavy and a bit too hard, the temptation can be to pull away from God. But we need to do the opposite. We need to be intentional and to, to make space and time to come to him, to bring it all to the God who understands exactly what we're feeling. When you feel overwhelmed, pray. When you feel overwhelmed, recognize that God's will is the best. Please take this away from me, Father, Jesus prayed, yet not as I will, but as you will. Just because our lives haven't turned out the way that we expected them to, or the way that we, we hoped that they would, it doesn't mean that we are in the wrong place. It doesn't mean that God has left us to our own devices. You know, we may never fully understand why things happen the way they do this side of heaven. And when we get there, I doubt we'll care very much. But we can rest in the same assurance that Jesus had, that God's will for our lives is the best thing for us. That God's will for our lives is the best thing for those others around us who desperately need to know him. You know, if my going through a tough time 
could help bring somebody else closer to God, then it is absolutely 100% worth it. Hebrews tells us that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. He knew that that time of suffering, that that time of feeling overwhelmed wasn't the end. He could see what was coming ahead. And it's the same for us. What joy awaits us as well. First Peter chapter five tells us that the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong and firm and steadfast. We may find ourselves in the hurting, in the suffering, in the pain, in the hardship for a little while. But we have the promise of strength and joy and of a wonderful eternity to come. And that is a good perspective to keep when we find ourselves in that place. When you feel overwhelmed, pray. When you feel overwhelmed, recognize that God's will is the best. And when you feel overwhelmed, put your trust in God again. Keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus can help us, even when things don't turn out the way that we had hoped. It can help us to, to keep on keeping on, to press on, into everything that he has promised us, into everything that he is calling us to do. When your emotions are raging and you feel crushed by the weight of it all, that is the time when you need to trust all the more. That's the time when you need to come back to the promises of God, to recognize that, that his will is perfect and to spend time with him in prayer. That is the secret. That is the way that we can overcome regardless of what we're facing and regardless of what we're feeling. I don't know why my new house wasn't finished in time for me to move into properly before we left. I don't know why my internet connection died completely when I was trying to download photos for presentations in the UK. I don't know why all of those extra stresses came together at that time. I absolutely believe that God could have smoothed those problems out for me. I don't know exactly why he didn't and why I was left in that place of feeling overwhelmed. But maybe, just maybe, in going through that time when the world felt heavy, I had the chance to learn again that I can lean on him through any storm, that I can share any load with him, any burden with him, and know that he will help me to carry it, that I can trust in his perfect will for my life, even if the road is a little bit bumpy, even if things don't work out as I had expected them to. Well, thank you so much for joining me for that thought from the Bible today. I hope that that was an encouragement to you. Please do, as I said earlier, please do let me know if these videos have been helpful. You can like this video or leave a comment. It just helps me to know whether to continue with them, whether you're enjoying them, what kind of things you would like to hear in future videos. I love to hear from you. So please do get in touch and, and let me know. So I will not see you next week as I'll be getting ready to jump on a plane over to the UK, but I will see you soon.